Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to tell you about the Adaball Apex 12 by 50 ED binoculars. So if you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I do use binoculars, monoculars, that sort of thing for ranging, hunting, spotting for friends, maybe a little bit of bird watching, and uh, making sure my kid is still at the park for my house. And so there's a couple uses for optics that I have. A majority of it is going to be in outdoors kind of activities that probably most people could relate to. I'm going to do my best to try to think of all types of end users as I talk about this. There's going to be some b-roll going on in the background and uh, sometimes it'll match up with what I'm talking about and sometimes it's just there to entertain you because I think talking is just boring if it's just somebody with a, a tabletop review. I think that's kind of boring. I want you to see how I'm actually using them and so there's a little bit of something to entertain you in the background and see the different weather conditions and uh, what the real world actual use looked like for me. All right, let's start off with some of the specs. It has extra low dispersion glass, that's awesome. It has kind of a rubber armor all over it. It has an integrated tripod attachment at the kind of the nose right in the middle on the front half. It has multi-layer, it's dielectric coating. It has nitrogen purging, which is really great so it doesn't fog up on you. It's multi, fully multi-coated and it has a back four prism. Very important feature right there. Adjustable eye cups and diopter. It is fog proof, waterproof, shock proof. It has a medication range of 12X. The objective lens diameter is 50 millimeters. Eye relief, this is important. Eye relief is actually 15 millimeters. The field of view is 360 feet at 1,000 yards. I put that to the test and it absolutely is. The angular field of view is 5.2 degrees. The close focus is 2.5 meters, incredible. The prism glass, again, is a back four prism. The focus system is a center focus. It's a center knob right there. It has an interpulpary distance of 60 to 74 millimeters. The exit pupil is 4.9 millimeters. The weight is only 28.6 ounces, not too bad. Length is 6.4 inches, again, really not too bad. And the material, this is probably something that you haven't looked into in the past with other binoculars, but this is cool. This is a magnesium alloy uh, body with this. So I'm just showing you how those eye cups work. I really like that. They have a couple different uh, stages in it. As you twist it to the left, it'll stand off at a couple different distances and uh, just very cool, nice feature, haven't had binoculars that worked that well on that particular feature. A lot of them, it's kind of an indefinite distance, and I like that one because it has staging built into the uh, eye cup itself. Very cool. So one of the ways that I mostly use stuff like this is in spotting. I do a lot of spotting at competitions, but also when I'm plinking with my friends, here's some at 1,030 yards. Nice. So that was using a uh, 300 PRC uh, my friend was shooting it and then we were doing a little bit at 600 and what was it 630 and one difficult thing with doing a review like this is i was trying different methods of how i could record the actual glass quality and what i was seeing downrange through the binoculars so at this particular time i was just actually zooming my camera into the lens and so forgive me there's a little bit of orange there i was wearing all orange it's reflecting off of me you're not going to see that when you look through glass and the glass is always going to be better guys when you're putting stuff through a camera it is going to dull down that image your eye is going to make better sense of it than the camera does uh, it's just one of the issues that comes with trying to actually record through a live image of um, you know whether a scope or binoculars monoculars spotting scopes it always dulls it down a little bit compared to what you're going to see in real life and i'm going to tell you again this is a really good glass a couple of the features that i think are pretty important to me i like the armor coating I definitely wanted something that was not going to rust and something that was going to hold up to maybe just a little bit of abuse or getting tossed around a little bit. I'm not super careful with my things. I'm not reckless, I don't think. But sometimes stuff happens, and if you take stuff hunting, you guys know how it is. Uh, if you're at the range and other people are using your gear, if you're in the rain like I was in this particular day, we're in a little bit of rain, and you know it turns into sleet, freezing rain, and sometimes just having a nice rubberized armor coating is much nicer than the other plasticky feels or metal type feeling uh, binoculars and, and spotting scopes I've used in the past. I would prefer something like this. It's just warmer to the touch. It's much more grippy, which is nice. Like when I hold on to it, it's much more grippy. And then on top of that, just the waterproofness overall, these are shockproof, waterproof, fog proof. And I appreciate that. The stainless bits on there are really, really nice or aluminum, whatever they actually are, but they don't rust. That's what I know because in the rain, nothing 
uh, nothing fogged up on me, nothing rusted from the experiences I had. And unfortunately, four or five times that I went out to film for this particular set of binoculars, it was raining or sleeting on me or snowing. So I didn't have a lot of nice weather. I had a lot of inclement weather when I was using them. And that's real world stuff, guys. When you're out hunting or you're at the range and that's the day you had off, that's what you're gonna have to deal with. And so I was actually happy to see that these do hold up and they function the way they're supposed to in inclement weather and nothing got inside those lenses. They were very easy to clean off. You know, it's a big 50 millimeter objective up front there. And also on the eyepiece there, very easy to work with. It comes with a cleaning cloth as well. So just keep that in your binocular bag if you uh, choose to carry it around that way. That's how I carry them around. It's not too big. The form factor of that bag itself is pretty good. So I throw my binoculars in there and then I clean off my lenses, you know, right before I, I go out for the, uh, the next hunt it is worth noting that in the shot you're seeing right here, I'm using an adapter that goes on that nose piece, and so it adapts it to an Arca plate. In my case, that's what I chose to run it to. And so if you want to throw those on some sort of tripod attachment, that doesn't come with the binoculars, but there is an attachment, a quarter inch attachment built into the binoculars themselves. You just take the cap off and then screw it in your piece, kind of like what you see I have there. All right, so looking through here, I can see I mean, the field of view is great because it's, it's big. It's, it's just got a big field of view. The eye relief is really generous on this optic, as I've said, I'm sure before. So I can see about 18, 17 or 18 of the target berms. This field of view at 900 yards, which is pretty generous. That's pretty big. All right, now going over to the Apex binos. <laughs> so basically doubling that field of view. I can see all 20 of the berms and the flag, the very top of the trees, all the way down to the 800 yard line right in front of me. Yeah, the field of view, there's just no comparison when it comes to binos and um, having you know the 50 millimeter objective and just huge field of view and lots of detail. When I look at my target with these, again, 12X and then here we're on 12X. As you would expect, um, these are brighter. Again, using two eyes, 50 millimeter objective, big, um, it's ED glass. So you would expect to be able to see more detail and have a bigger field of view and all that kind of stuff with this, obviously. I'm just saying it is, you know, it's a considerable increase. And so, so there's a hunting advantage with the Apex 12 buys um, using that, or if you're, you're hunting animals or observation or whatever it is you have to do, you know, you could say, well, why don't you just use the optic? Well, field of view, brightness, image, um, lack of obstruction, because you're not dealing with a reticle in here. And so you have a lot of coverage here. You can just cover a huge area and it's very comfortable. It's not quite as stressful as looking at a reticle for your eye because you can just kind of float around in there. Whereas um, a reticle, although this one isn't bad, it's just gonna obstruct some of your field of view and then you're gonna have a reduced field of view because you're looking through one eye obviously and um, that reticle in the way you know it's it's a second focal plane and the reticle stays the same size at all magnifications so whether you're on one power or on um, 12 power that reticle is going to stay the same size but i'm just going to move this over real quick down to one power and yeah i mean now i have a huge field of view so there's an advantage of uh, being able to back it off completely but i have no magnification and so it didn't really do anything for me there by bringing it down to one power unless I was shooting across a room really, really close and I can move that parallax down really, really close. But these also focus incredibly close. They really do. It's only, only a few yards away that these can, can focus to and then to infinity. And at 930 yards, just crystal clear. I can see my hits on the target a little bit more clearly. I, I just feel like um, that's what you'd expect anyways but it is objectively true. This is giving me a better image than looking through an optic, even a very good optic, something that I've been ringing, just ringing that uh, silhouette size target there at 930 yards, just on repeat. I'm gonna have to repaint it. It's, uh, it's really impressive. This optic is good, but I'm just saying this is what's impressing me right now. At this time of the evening, I'm just getting such a good image. And I feel like if I was using this for glassing, hunting, elk hunting, that kind of thing, this is what I would spend a lot of my time looking through, honestly, would be the binos. So my opinion counts for something, I think, I would like to think, but I passed them around to my other friends and I had other friends spotting for me, of course, when we were shooting and even at 1,030 yards. So my friend here, 
uh, who had just got his first thousand yard impact that day shooting on a, a different optic he went over and looked through his 12 buys and i think he was a little skeptical at first like how much am i going to be able to see with 12 buys but it's incredible guys it is so incredible how much detail and how great the image is even at 1030 yards looking at one scope that's a 30 power and then going down to 12 power you can really see some advantages of spotting with this and of course field of view but also detail is part of it because you're using two eyes and lots of my friends that used this or look through them notice the same thing that there's a really big advantage at looking through two lenses or, or using your left and your right eye both not just your right eye looking through another scope spotting it's completely different now I want to transition to hunting now I was trying to hook up a little apparatus here so I could give you some images of what it looked like it didn't work out completely but it it kind of gives you an image of what it's like to look through the optic again you're going to be dealing with the phone changing resolution a little bit and things like that but I did use it quite a bit while I was hunting I went deer hunting unfortunately I got the flu really quickly so I didn't have too much time to get out and hunt but I did use these binos every single time that I went out and you know a lot of the time that I was out there it was not optimum for conditions and really the deer really got moving early in the morning and late at night and so my eyes they're not terrible but I do wear glasses a lot of times and I wanted something like these binoculars right here to look through and I was so happy to be able to get these before hunting season I've actually had them for several months been putting this review together for several months and been using them lots of different ways but hunting was really the thing where I knew that I knew at dark times you know maybe dusk or early in the morning I wanted binoculars to be able to see even a hundred yards guys my eyes just can't do it but these binoculars definitely could the terrain type that I was deer hunting this year is right on the edge of a field and then there's a hilly area about 75 yards away and then the woods and then there's a swamp and so I had a lot of transition a lot of tan unfortunately we didn't have snow early enough in the deer season had a lot of tan and gray and things that are just perfect for deer to blend into especially when it's dark out and so this shooting lane which you see right there it's about 75 80 yards down that trail and so there's a nice kind of pocket where the deer come through they pause on the end of that trail and i was hoping to build a snag a deer right there um, i didn't end up getting a deer because i didn't go out enough but it was nice to be able to see that when i was using the, the binoculars themselves that everything nice. contrasted that. really nicely if you uh, saw that image from when I was going back and forth in the woods when I was looking at you know kind of thick brush and trees and that kind of thing in the background it was easy for me to pick out details of different things and know what they were and so if there had been a deer over there and I saw a few but if there had been a deer over there and there was something to shoot at I would see it coming before it was in my my crossing my trail crossing I would be able to pick it out I would see that detail and I know that I know that I know next year these are coming with me. Hopefully I get more time out in the stand uh, to be hunting. But I was, I was really happy with their performance. Right now. Just for your spin drift. So back to a spotting application for just a second here. This part of the conversation is really important to me. One thing that really impresses me is just how little magnification I actually need if the glass is good and I can use both my eyes to kind of get that image united together. You know, your brain puts the left and right eye together. It was amazing how little I needed to be able to spot hits or misses, even in vegetation at 1,030. Do you see that? Oh. It was a target right at about shoulder height. A target right? Yeah. So the wind, if you can see the wind picked up right before you shot, up to about 10 miles an hour. There's kind of a little window in there in that 300 yard line, if you see those flags, yeah. it picked up. I would I would hold uh, a target left and send one more. That is really something. So I'm not completely foreign to binoculars. I just didn't know a lot of the information on the internals and uh, wasn't an expert of any sort. And so I did a lot of research and I started looking into binoculars about what really makes these stand out. Why do I think these are so good? And why do I like them so much? Because, you know, if you had asked me, just being truthful, if you had asked me six months ago, I was pretty okay with just using binoculars and uh, they still have their place for sure. But I think the things that are really impressing me, okay, so quality glass, it's this really big change. Having the BAK four uh, prisms in there. I think that's a really big difference between that and the BK7s out there. 
it's just noticeable. I put some side to side right away, noticeable. Even in peak, like right now our optimum viewing conditions really, as far as where the sunlight is and everything being uh, properly illuminated, I can, I can see my targets really well. But between the BK7s and this, there's a big difference. And the other thing that is really blowing my mind is just how field of view and this 50 millimeter objective um, are, are working together. Um, just being able to see so much between your two eyes putting that image together because that's what happens is your two eyes put together the images that they're both seeing whereas with a monocular you know you're only getting the detail of one eye and uh you know I, I usually use my right eye even though it's um maybe poorer vision and i'm just noticing that putting these two together i can see detail on my target that i've never been able to see with a 12x optic i the only thing i can say is i think the really good quality glass and the fact that I have two images coming together from the left and right side, you know, my eyes, putting together in my mind, it's bringing out so much more detail. And I can just see things like on the dirt berm and rocks and clays and on my target, the hits themselves, it's much more clear. And I think that's, that has to do with just having those two images together. And again, it's, it's by 50 and so these are nice and big. And so my field of view down there is enormous. It's huge. Wow, looks good. Color is very good. At the edges, this is an important difference too. At the edges of the view, it doesn't get hazy around the edges. It's extremely, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and move this a little bit. At the very, very edge of the glass, it's still pretty good. That's an important distinction between that and a BK7 piece of glass is that these are much, much more clear all the way through the range. Top to bottom looks really good. And of course, optically, the very center of the glass is just it's very premium. Uh, it looks, looks like some of the better glass that I have, actually. I like that a lot. You know, spotting for people, spotting the animals down there and stuff, it's just so much easier. And I like 12 as a magnification. That's, that's just a preference thing. You know, eights, tens, twelves are all good. Could use them all. But as far as this 12 goes, I really like this range. I think this is the right range to release their premium offering. And this seems like, this seems like a home run for an optic. Wow. You can see those little hits on my target at 900 yards. So real briefly, who are these four? Uh, competition shooters, hunters, bird enthusiasts and watchers, people who go to the zoo and want to see the animals closer. I mean, it's for everybody, but here's the thing, guys. Don't start with a crappy pair of binoculars. Don't buy the cheap ones. Honestly, I'm just going to push you right to these because my opinion was changed on monoculars and spotting scopes and a whole lot of things I've been using in the past because these were so good. So just skip to these. Go to attaball-optics.com and you'll see for yourself that these are very worthwhile, very high quality, and pretty much affordable compared to some of the competition. I think they're very, very good in what they're offering here. It's competitive, and I'll be holding on to mine. I like them a lot.